I'm gonna make an ability that actually deals damage. I know, wild ID, right? So if we just copy over the weight ability, we will see that we have weight one. I will call this attack. And instead of just on activate ability uh, delaying, what we'll do is we will, well, we'll still do the delay actually. Probably make the delay like, well, two seconds was pretty good. And here we'll get the owning ability components and we'll get the targets from the owning ability components. Then from that, we will get the turn-based component uh, from that target, and that's the wrong thing. So get turn-based components, and we'll be applying a gameplay effect to it. So we'll apply gameplay effect to target, or just apply effect to target. Target component will be, of course, the component from our target. The attribute to effect will be HP. The magnitude will be minus 10. The effect type will be instant. Uh, the current value is what we're going to be targeting. We'll add to it. And that's pretty much it. We don't really need to do anything with the effect. And then we just, uh, I don't know, delay here at the very end. Maybe we want to spawn in like a uh, particle system to show who we attacked, right? So um, spawn Niagara system at location. Do we have any Niagara systems here? Nope. I'm just going to make one real quick. Um, omnidirectional burst. We're just going to make those particles really big so that you can see them. Uh, going to be relatively simple. So like initialize particle, uh, uniform sprite size from like 15 to 30 instead. Maybe I'll like do 30 to 50 so that they're nice and big. And then scale sprite size, we can also increase that. I feel like it's being overridden somewhere. Oh, there we go. It caught up. Um, yeah, that's definitely too big. <laughs> so let's go back to tw uh, 15 to 25 or something like that. It's just taking a moment uh, to catch up with everything. That's a little bit better. So we have that now. Uh, we can go back into the attack thing. Uh, set that to that Niagara system. Delay for two seconds so that it actually like, shows a little bit before moving on to the next turn. And then the location will be our target's uh, get actor location. And like this, you can start building out more complex things with sound effects also being added in and whatever you want. Camera animations, skeletal animations, whatever you want to do, right? But for now, we just have this uh, attacking thing, which is quite nice. So uh, we go back into our player actor here, and we'll change this jump to just be the uh, attack ability instead. And then in the turn-based actor, I'm actually going to change this... Uh, on set turn active to being uh, the thing that executes an ability. I will get rid of that. What I will do instead is for the enemy actor, we have a delegate on that, on the system component now, right? We have like this, turn started. So we can just make that event and then activate single ability and the single ability that will activate will be the attack ability. It will skip the selection in this case, and it will need a target. So the way that we uh, can easily set up this target for now is just, um, you'll want to get your ability system component and then set target from that. And we'll get the player controller. We will cast to our horribly named player controller class. And we'll just get the array and get a random thing from that. So get active characters or something, I think we called it. Active party and just uh, get a random array from that uh, item or run item from that array rather uh, to set as a target. So now it's going to randomly attack one of my party uh, every time it gets a turn as the AI. So let's see how that works out. So we have weight and weight. Uh, I didn't give it a proper name. That makes sense. <laughs> so let's go back into my attack class defaults attack. So we can actually see which one we're supposed to do. We have attack. We can select that. Then we select a target. If I press backspace now, we go back into the selection menu and you can see that targeting has stopped, but we can like attack. I can attack this dude. It spawns on the particles, it waits two seconds, and then when I attack, you can see that this one actually does update its HP value when I select it to show its current HP. Now, again, in a proper RPG, like a JRPG sense, you probably would have all of the enemy actors at the same time 
show their HP in your UI or whatever. That's not how we have things set up right now, uh, but you're very much good. And as a little last thing before we end off, and then next time we'll probably uh, do actual win and lose states for the battles. But for now, last thing to do is I want to set up that this attack uh, is going to cost us 10 MP. And just as easily as that, it's going to take 10 MP to do this attack now. So let's try to attack. And then we attack like three times before we cycle back around, of course. But you'll see that when we cycle back around to the first character, we can also see the AI do its thing now. So it's attacking me, and then it's attacking me like very much at random. Uh, but now when we update, you can see I only have 90 HP because I was attacked. And uh, the MP actually did not seem uh, to work properly. So that is because, uh, again, it's been a long day. I, I'm going to record the rest of this series another day. The attack doesn't commit ability. So like commit ability, and only if it was properly committed will we do this. We obviously also um, have that function like can do ability. So we probably should go back into like the battle hub. And I think we just can do ability, right? We get the target component and then put in the ability for it. And for now, I think what we're going to do is we just only add these if we can actually do the ability. You might want to like grade them out and like make it skip over within the selection and all that kind of stuff. But again, this is very much something that's up to you how you want to like design the experience for your game. Uh, but we made that function so we apparently just cannot do the weight because it doesn't have a cost as worth looking into to check hey, if the cost is zero always return true for this so let's just immediately do that actually can do ability if our costs is uh i guess less than or equal to zero you always should be able to do it so you just immediately uh return with can do Otherwise, we uh, check stuff. Now we have a weight back, which is amazing. Uh, and we can do some attacks. So let's attack uh, the top one with all of them. And when we circle back around, it should have uh, used up some of the MP on all of these characters. So we'll get attacked a couple of times here, uh, which uh, actually it is stalling these guys because they don't have MP. Makes sense, <laughs> right? So for now, the way that I'm going to fix that is just to give them uh, some MP. We might make a separate, like, two or three videos at the very end to make, like, a state tree or a behavior tree. Behavior tree probably makes more sense here. Uh, to decide, like, who they should attack and what attack they should use and all that kind of stuff. Um, but for now, it's just using attack at something randomly. Uh, but it'll use MP, and it'll have also 50 of it why not so we go through this whole song and dance again now they can actually attack because they have mp fantastic and now when i'm back at my character you can see i only have 40 mp because i actually used up some mp attacking these guys now there is no fail state they just can't die we can't die nothing can die so next time let's uh, let characters be able to die and when all characters on my side die you lose when all characters on the opposing side die you win and a very big thank you to all my Patreons. You can see them on screen right now. If you want to help support the channel or get any of the project files in any of my tutorials, there's a link down below to the Patreon page to support me or alternatively as a YouTube member. And a huge thank you to my Cave Big Brain tier supporters, which care more for coding than impulse control, Earl Monsville Erno, my Cave Student tier supporters, Paul Berry and Oiku, and I cave digger tier supporters, Mauricio Ferrias.